Yes, my name is Jane Hopi. I'm the director and chairman of the environmental program in ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. We are a specialized agency of the UN that deals with aviation matters. So the IPCC has estimated that aviation uh, accounts for 2% of the CO2 emissions, overall global emissions. Uh, from those 2%, 1.3% relates to international aviation and 0.7% is domestic aviation. So 1.3% is under the responsibility of ICAO and 0.7% um, all the countries under the UNFCCC process uh, they deal with their domestic emissions for all the sectors including domestic aviation under transportation through their NDCs and the measures that they will do to address them. So, 2016 was a, a very important year for international aviation. In fact, it's our historical year uh, as we believe that uh, in 2016 we are turning the page and making aviation really sustainable for the future. Um, uh, the organization since 2010 has established aspirational goals. So our 191 countries that are members of uh, ICAO they had agreed with two aspirational goals, one 2% efficiency per year, um, increasing the efficiency, and the other one is carbon neutrality from 2020. So it was the first sector that received uh, goals for CO2 on you know, a global level. That said, we also came in the same uh, time with a basket of measures that would allow aviation to meet those goals. So among the measures you have technology, operational measures, alternative sustainable fuels, and also market-based measures. Um, we have seen had a lot of progress on those measures, and um, in this year, as I said, was a remarkable year for us because we had two major global uh, agreements. The first one was for a standard for the certification of aircraft for CO2. So it's a global standard that gets into force in, in 2020. And um, from that time onwards, new aircraft types, they will have to be binded by those standards. So the best available technology in aviation uh, to reduce CO2 emissions has to be on board of aircraft. Together with that standard for the new types, we also said that the current types that are already flying and being produced, if you want to produce after 2028, they also will have to comply with those standards. So we give an extra time for those types that are already flying to um, in introduce the, the modifications so that they can comply with the standards. But after that, they will have also to comply with the standard. Um, the second um, breakthrough we had this year was, uh, I think you have heard, was a global agreement for market-based measures for international aviation that happened in the assembly and we had approved the CORSIA, which is a global offsetting uh, scheme uh, for international aviation uh, operations. Well, it, I have to add one thing that none of that, uh, you know, all those efforts, and I only mentioned technology and the global MDM, but I told you we have four elements, so a lot has been done on operational measures as well in the, at the same time, and that's very important because we can lose uh, all the benefits that we are accruing with those measures if we don't have a very efficient air transport navigation system in place. So we have to ensure that aircraft will go from A to B in an optimized fly, in a very efficient manner, but uh, and in another way that we are tackling it, another element is alternative fuels. Um, alternative fuels can be a game changer. Um, we have seen a lot of progress uh, since we are engaged in these activities. Uh, we have five certification pathways that have been approved. So from different feedstocks, you now ha can produce Jet 1 fuel, which is the fuel from aviation from that originally is from fossil fuel. You now have five pathways to use different sources of feedstocks to produce a fuel that is the same characteristics as the Jet 1 produced from fossil fuel. So it's what we call a drop-in uh, fuel. You can blend those sustainable fuels with the Jet 1 in 
the aircraft. So you don't have to modify the aircraft, you don't have to modify the airport or the system. And this year I thought it was a, it's a great year for aviation and we have been seeing a lot of airlines that were taking steps and test flies with alternative fuel, so it's a reality, but we were not escalating really the production or the number of flies. And in February this year, Oslo Airport was the first airport that decided that they would have alternative fuels at the airport. So all the flights that leave the, the Oslo Airport, for example, will have this blended mix in uh, the aircraft. Uh, uh, something very important that happened also in 2010, we have started our initiative of state action plans. Um, we voluntarily, our states were invited to look into their international aviation emissions, look into what would be better, best for them in terms of uh, using those elements to come up with something that would address their CO2 emissions. And so they had to basically be trained to develop those action plans so that they could submit that to ICAO. We, in ICAO, we have developed guidance. We had developed a series of training workshops. We had had more than 4,000 calls with our states to prepare them to be able to do their action plans. And uh, we trained those focal points. We have basically two focal points per state. And what, it, it, what is very important that in doing that, states have to create what we call the stakeholder group. The information is in the state but it's usually pulverized by different agencies, different parts. So the stakeholder group is very important because then you can get the information from the different sources, cross this information, and have the best outcome when you have to decide then how to address the CO2. So usually you have the Civil Aviation Authority, which are the focal points. You involve the ministries of uh, the Ministry of Environment representatives. You have representatives from the airport, the airline, the fuel producer and supplier of the airport, the statistics division that is in whatever ministry, and they all sit together around the table and they look into the data, they look into the measures, and they start discussing. And when you do that, the interaction is so amazing. You know, there is creativity, there is innovation on the possible measures, there is cooperation, so you see really things moving. Um, a lot of people said, oh, that's voluntary, nobody's going to do that. By the end of 2013, we had basically 70 action plans being submitted already to ICAO, and at that point, the European Union, the GEF, uh, the UNDP, they all got quite in interested in that and so they decided to provide some financial assistance to some states for them to develop their action plans. So um, we have, uh, with the EU for example, we have uh, 14 states, 12 in Africa and 2 in the Caribbean that have now developed their action plans, implemented uh, what we call an aviation environmental system, which is a monitoring reporting system where all those stakeholders uh, contribute. It's operating. They are already transmitting information monthly to ICAO. And I just came back from Gabon uh, one week ago when they had a workshop to discuss the measures that the African countries are going to take as pilot measures. So we are already in the third objective of the program, implementing measures. And I, I have to tell you, some of those developing countries and, and LDCs in Africa, uh, right now, they have better information on aviation emissions than some of the developed countries. And so I'm, 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 I really believe on, on capacity building. That has also contributed for the states that have done the action plans and submitted the action plans. And right now we have 102 states that submitted their action plans already. Uh, that has facilitated their understanding on the matter. And I think that was also a big contributor to the success we had in the last assembly, where then knowing what they were doing and the measures, they understood that we could embark in this CORSIA scheme to complement the other measures if we are not by 2020 carbon neutral. So we could, that facilitated the agreement as well.